Welcome to this edition of the Purity Post, a short video blog to help you understand and apply biblical truth regarding sexuality. My name is Jonathan Darty, and I'm the director of Be Broken Ministries, a national outreach whose mission is healing sexual brokenness by God's grace, one story at a time. Today, we're going to see what the Bible has to say about prostitution. This is clearly a topic that's too big for a short purity post like this, but I hope we can at least get an idea of what God has to say on the topic. First, there is nowhere in Scripture that we see prostitution cast in a favorable light. In fact, it seems to be a picture God uses repeatedly to illustrate what He doesn't want people doing, whether physically or spiritually. God doesn't want our bodies or our souls sold to another for dishonorable uses. The wise father in Proverbs 23 exhorts his son in verses 26 through 28, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. For a prostitute is a deep pit, an adulteress, a narrow well. She lies in wait like a robber, increases the traitors among mankind. And when God is teaching the Israelites, how to live, he, he commands them in Leviticus 19, verse 29, Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute, lest the land fall into prostitution and the land become full of depravity. Prostitution, the selling of one's body for sexual use, was never in God's plan. But sin has a way of twisting and distorting all that God made good and pure into something profane and detestable. The act of prostitution is a terrible trap, promising riches to the prostitute and pleasure to the buyer, but both acquire neither. Both are left empty, alone, and broken. Even more devastating than the sexual act of prostitution is what the Bible repeatedly depicts as the heart of prostitution, a way that we can sell out to less than God's best and give our hearts over to the idols of this world money, fame, sex, power, and on and on. This seems to grieve and even anger the heart of God more than the physical act. After all, life from God's perspective is so much more about the heart and not simply about behavior. When the prophet Ezekiel is told by God to point out the sins of the Israelites, the imagery of prostitution is used. In Ezekiel 16.30 he says, How sick is your heart, declares the Lord God, because you did all these things, the deeds of a brazen prostitute. Notice the connection the Lord is making to their heart. Their sinful behaviors were merely a reflection of their adulterous heart. This is the true abomination of prostitution before God. Not that someone solicits money for sex, but that their heart has strayed far from Him. Prostitution like any other sin, is an affront to God and His holiness. It's not how He made our bodies to be used. But also, like any other sin, God's grace through Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross paid the full penalty for it. What does this mean? It means God hates prostitution, but He loves prostitutes. In that same passage in Ezekiel, when God was pouring out His anger on His people for their prostitute-like sins, he also reminds them in verses 62 to 63, I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall know that I am the Lord, that you may remember and be confounded, and never open your mouth again because of your shame, when I atone for all that you have done, declares the Lord God. Had the Israelites turned their hearts from God and worshiped pagan idols? Yes. Did God break His promise to them? No. This is good news for both the prostitute and all the Johns out there. If you've engaged in prostitution, you have strayed from God's best, but God has never wavered on His promise of faithfulness to you. For all who trust in Christ, God gives a wonderful guarantee to never leave us nor forsake us. He even says in 2 Timothy 2, if we are faithless, He remains faithful. Does God want you to continue in prostitution? Of course not. Jesus died to set us free from sin, free from all that is not God's best for us. But even when you struggle in the process, He is with you every step, 
encouraging you, empowering you, reminding you of His faithful promises. It is by His grace we are saved, and by that same grace we are being transformed. May God's grace grow deeper and wider in your soul, not merely bringing about change in your behavior, but may His grace break the power of idolatry, which is far more devastating. Because when your heart is set free from the idols of self-worship and sexual sin, you won't want to sell out to anyone but Jesus, the true lover of your soul. Thanks for watching this edition of the Purity Post. If you'd like more resources, please visit BeBroken.com or call our toll-free number at 1-800-49-PURITY. Keep pressing on.